<laughs> Welcome back. Well, here we are again, faced with, we want to redo one of our old favorites. Tableau has come out, the Tableau Corporation, and updated their software and put some really cool features in. So before we get to that, I thought it would be really good to just go over everything in general. How do we create a dashboard? And how do we make that dashboard cool? You know, so first we're gonna start with data prep preparation because you know like all all of my learning videos they always starts about the data when in doubt revisit your data we're going to talk about tiled versus floating dashboards in the creation what that means what, which one should i choose did you even know you could float a dashboard loading worksheets onto the dashboard we're going to cover that we're going to cover adding images navigation and customizing a button because you have navigation buttons but you can also customize those buttons and then, you know, we have device view, so you can see how it looks on a PC, a tablet, or an iPhone. So let's get started and have a little bit of fun with Tableau, because this is where we want to be, and looking forward to working with everybody today. So here, here I have a, a grid set of data. I created some charts and graphs, and you see I have a, a dynamic map or geography screen with, with a graph. I call it the graph in the graph, which is beautiful. And I have these charts, and then I built a customized line chart, and I put my image here. So this is a tiled dashboard. So the first thing you have to do when you do anything, when you go to the dashboard, is you first, like I said before, you have to build worksheets. You have to have content. If you don't have content, you can't do it. Like here we have the profit analysis. We link the profit analysis to the geo. We sub segment, subcategory, category, subsegment, a pie chart, a category line analysis. You know, categories, profit, expense analysis we built, um, a floating dashboard, and a tile dashboard. So in this exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a dashboard. The first thing you look at is your new, well, down here there's three icons. First one is new worksheet. So if you got to this point, you probably already know the worksheet. Then a new dashboard, and then finally a new storyboard. But we're not going to go storyboards in this video. We're only going to focus on dashboards. Let's come over here and just click Dashboard 3. And now I have two choices here on this dashboard, floating and tiled. Well, tiled, if you look at it, what we're basically doing with tiled is we can drag one icon over, you see it takes a whole sheet. You drag a second one over, and you take the other half of the sheet. You drag a third one over, it, takes yet, it starts dividing it naturally and you see there's limited real estate, so you gotta be kind of careful. It kind of dynamically refits and resizes, puts your legends on the right. It does an awful lot of good things really fast. This is the undo button, by the way, in case you didn't know it. I want to come back and back up. All right, that was interesting. Floating is a little bit more design, so for you, those people who are really artistic or want to place things in an exact manner, not that we haven't seen executives ask for that before. So we click on, say, maybe profit by geo, then we kind of place it and you can navigate around with it. In those guys, you can decide where you want to put the legend. You can put it up top. Oh, look at that. I have a slider here too. I go, how much profit I make by geo. I can put range of the good stuff. Maybe I want to focus on how much people who aren't making so money, much money this time. And I get all the, all the people who are not doing so well. Anyway, you see it, the graphs, when they move into the dashboard, you're able to navigate the dashboard. Um, profit analysis, maybe we'll put that below the chart because it's kind of linked to this chart anyway. And then we can um, think about it. Expense analysis, maybe put a good expense analysis here at the table because a lot of times folks would like to have the numbers, right? They like those cost tabulation reports, look at the numbers and go like that. So we've created, in this case, we've created a floating dashboard. This is a little good. As you saw, I placed things. What we haven't really done is put the images in and navigation button. So let's take a look at the images. Let's put the store manager. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make myself a store manager. See, I'm dragging it over and placing it. I got insert image or link image to a web object. I'm gonna link a file up here. I got a uh, good looking picture of myself. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna promote myself today to store manager. Fit and center image, I love this. And you can add some text. Or you put a URL in when you click on it where it goes. Maybe in this case, I would have it go to my profile on LinkedIn or something like that. So that way you can see the store manager that way or alternate text. We apply and voila, look at that. Came out pretty good. I look much better than a professional photo. Almost like a glamour shot. 
put it up there on the palette, make sure we're all good. And now we have a professional image as a store manager. Of course, we could add text and those kinds of things, a store manager. Then we have to have a navigation button. So let's drag a navigation button over. And you see, you go to edit the navigation and you hit the edit navigation button. Then what you're able to do is navigate to where. This is the beautiful part. No VBA coding, no links. It's just wonderful. So where do we want to navigate this to? Well, we saw in the book I have a floating dashboard. We, maybe we can go over to the tiled dashboard. Then the back, I don't know, before I get to the background, button style, we can also make this an image button. So the buttons can be customized. You choose uh -huh, a home button. Now we can go home. Or maybe I, I go over to the dollar sign button that I want to go to the dollar sign. And then I choose a background, and the background for this button could maybe be something like that as a pull. Oh, isn't it? Look it off, apply, see how it looks. Voila, I have this. So, this really, with that background button, I'm just doing this. Navigate to, I really think it should go to um, profit analysis because it's really all about the dollars in this case. So, we have to go to profit analysis. So, the thing is, navigation buttons will work on dashboards, not so much on worksheets. So if you really want to navigate to somewhere and back to somewhere, you just gotta think about the get back. So when I click this, it's okay, it's gonna to go to profit analysis. So I go to presentation mode, I click it, it went to profit analysis, which is fine. It worked as we described it to work, or we requested it. But, you know, really the trick to these things also is like to think about navigating between dashboards in those ways. Regards. So you want to be able to get from one dashboard to the other. And so you want to have a home button maybe. You have a navigation go to home. So you take your navigation and you go to home here. Hit the zero, edit button, navigate to, and we could call it the base dashboard or the home button. Maybe that's my tile dashboard. Um, we're going to go back to, you can actually just make it a text dashboard and say, go home. <laughs> you can just simply do that. You know, enter optional title, <laughs> yeah, navigate to, you can, you can do that. But then, and I like the image dashboards because we're all familiar with the images and we're all familiar with the home signal, the home file where you can actually just go home with something. And I, I did get to show I had um, public images, but we can just use those because it's important. You don't want to use warning you don't want to use images that belong to other people so you want to make sure that all the images that you use are either your own or you purchase the images that's actually very important you have a little home let me see if you get background here maybe you get like oh that's cool so i can have it at home and, and so here we go we've created a floating dashboard with expense analysis Nice geo with a chart and a chart, which I think is fantastic, by the way. Maybe we'll make another little video for one of those. We did, but really, we could rename this dashboard. It's a cool thing. So the good thing about not writing macros in Excel or something like that is you, when you change the title, it all updates automatically. You don't lose anything, which is really awesome. And this dashboard could be something like um, profitability dashboard. It looks like a lot of profitability pieces. Let's go ahead and create a tiled one. Let's create the dashboard symbol again. Create tile, it doesn't mean what we did before was wrong, but let's just take a look at it. So now profit by geo, we tile it up here. Hmm. Now it takes the whole screen, so we have to think about this. And maybe you wanna take the whole screen dashboard. You saw how I went to profit analysis. If you wanted to create a dashboard for just profit analysis, you could go that, you could put a home button back to back and forth. So I get all your buttons. I like to put all my buttons in one folder. That way they can operate when I start making these videos or when I'm making these dashboards, I have my collection of images that I'll use. It's important to have all the elements. And the key things you need for a dashboard are, you need to know what worksheets you're doing. You can't just run out and create dashboards unless you have the right worksheets. Like how many dashboards do I want? I want a profit or whatever those things are. Then profit analysis, try to drag it down. See, you see it gets a little bit tougher. And then remember I had expense, I call it tougher, but still, very effective. It fits everything right to the palette. I have the navigation buttons up here. I can still add the images. Put, put that good looking store manager up there. 
you know, grab that image in there. It's not so bad. And um, life is great. So I think it's done some really good things with these dashboards. Also, if we come back to this dashboard for us, the how one, we can also come back and we can look at the device preview, device type. Let's see. Desktop, I was looking for something else. It was cool. That's cool. Desktop, we can see that here. We're on desktop. But now you can look at tablet and see how it looks like a tablet. So very similar to desktop. Uh, well, this is a phone. Mm, let's see how it looks like a phone. It splits it up quite a different view for the phone. So, but not only that, it looks as that's a generic phone. You can actually come back and look at what it will look like on one of the iPhone X or I like those iPhone X's, by the way. They're kind of nice. Or, yeah, I'm a big fan of those. And then, of course, you know, we're family. I, I have Samsung's in the family, too. We have them all. So let's see. Let's pick one of these. Oh, 11 Pro. That's like a really cool one. So we see what this looks like on the iPhone. And you can see you can test everything on the iPhone. You can pick a particular phone people are looking at. Samsung Galaxies are pretty popular. Oh, you can see, look, the profile shield is getting kind of fuzzy there. Not really working. No, we don't want to do that. Just be careful how you do it. And you have navigation buttons, profit analysis. So it shows you exactly what it looks like when you go to that. So you're able to look at both the mobile app. And if you have a problem, you have to fix it. You have to go back and say, okay, profit by you. That title is really not working. In fact, it's, it's kind of bleeding on, it's actually bleeding on top of this image. So when you build these dashboards, you have to really think about what it looks like on a phone and everything. This doesn't make sense regardless because you know maybe I have a store manager but now my profit analysis is up top then I have a store manager in the middle and then so if somebody's doing analysis I have buttons down here in the middle and then I have profit analysis on the bottom it, it doesn't line up very well on the phone so you're really going to have to like work with it to work, make it work on the phone and go to individual settings and sizes and things like that so those things are really important because you don't get it won't look right so you have to think about how it looks on the phone. In my case, it's a perfect example of how not to make it look. But I hope that this video was helpful. We've shown you how to look at it at a PC, how to look at a tablet, how to look at a phone, and then you're gonna to have to come back and have to change it, right, to make sure it fits right. Maybe you need to make the dashboard smaller. Maybe pick the sequence that said, oh, it picked up this one first for the phones, because a lot of today, as we work with the speed of thought, what we wanna do, and you wanna, dig into things particularly people love executives love to go onto iphones we all do right with we've ever anybody who's ever googled something on iphone or a galaxy would definitely quickly tell you or a samsung any other samsung device you know the phone's the way to go some people i talked to they've given up computers and switched to 100 percent over so it matters on how you do that so go ahead and take a look and um have fun if you have any questions write it in the comments feel definitely subscribe to the channel I'm all constantly putting more videos out here. We'll probably put a lot more videos to show how this tablet looks on a phone and we'll get a little more creative that way. Thank you. Have a great day.